Fran McNeil, host of Significant TV. Significant stories by significant entrepreneurs. And joining me in the studio today is Bernard C. Wright, CPM, and Principal and Senior Director of BDJ Ventures, LLC. Bernard, thank you. I'm going to toss my paper away. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Pretty exciting. We've seen each other around in the, yes. as they call it, entrepreneurial ecosystem in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Absolutely. And um, very exciting to have you on the show. Well, again, thank you for inviting me. I oh, really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, lots of questions as I prepared for the interview. And although I've read your website, our viewers may not have, um, BDJ Ventures. Why did you start this business and um, what do you do? Okay. Well, BDJ Ventures LLC actually started as a calendar company, quite frankly. Mm. Uh, years ago, I met a young man. We used to work together in corporate America. I'm a little bit older than he is, but he came in as a very uh, interesting individual, just a fun-loving guy, very intelligent. And I've always had these entrepreneurial inklings, if you will, and just observing his work ethic, his intelligence, and all of that, and he was really fun-loving, wasn't as... Uh, um, let's say, wasn't as uh, precise and tailored mm -hmm. in his professional presentation. You know, he was just a fun-loving college kid. <laughs> and but, but I really liked him, and so we became fast friends. And I've always had these thoughts about doing something. And in my case, it was really about trying to promote positive images of African-American men. It wasn't just a business focus, the calendar. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to him uh, one day about this idea I had. And after we went through this process of uh, discussion, and him playing devil's advocate and me uh -huh. coming up with answers and responses, he said, Bernard, I think it'll work. I said, no, Darnell, I know it will work. <laughs> and so that's how it started. That was the okay. genesis of BDJ Ventures LLC. Okay. He uh, introduced me to his brother, who happens to be an identical twin, mm -hmm. uh, Daryl Daisy. Mm -hmm. And then there was another colleague in, in our corporate uh, offices that worked with us and uh, Joseph Jetter, and that's how we formed BDJ Ventures. BDJ mm -hmm. is nothing more than the first initials of mm -hmm. each, uh, the first names of each individual partner, mm -hmm. and that's really how it started. And so the calendar itself uh, really took off uh, uh, very quickly. We um, uh, we worked with uh, printing overseas, uh, wow. but we had to really generate energy in the the immediate Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman by the name of Ralph Mundy mm -hmm. at Mundy's Cards and Gifts, that, which was in the gallery. And I went to him with a prototype, told mm -hmm. him what I was doing, and he believed in me. And mm -hmm. so he gave me some insight into, from an industry perspective, the things that we needed to do. It couldn't just be door to door. We needed to get involved in the industry, which is the uh, uh, social expression industry. And so he told me about the National Stationery Show. He said, you need to go. Wow. Uh, he told me about the American Booksellers Convention. You need to go. Mm -hmm. And so we got on board and we started going. So we're there in, uh, exhibiting with all the major players mm -hmm. in the social expression industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, we're actually in here. You're in business. And right, that's right. how it right. started. Uh -huh. And so we gained a few customers and then it grew and grew and grew. And we ended up in over a thousand different retail outlets throughout the entire United States. Hallmark, uh, uh, Spencer Gifts, a number of others, and that's how it happened. But we had an African-American male calendar, where, which was promoting positive images of African-American men mm -hmm. because we, so, mm -hmm. we saw so many negative stereotypes perpetuated mm -hmm. on the in the media. And I knew a lot of guys, just like me, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. come from impoverished beginnings, but they're quality individuals. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, we need to present that. As a matter of fact, in our very first calendar, Yuki Washington was one of our models. Oh our my own goodness! Philadelphia well, area hey, Yuki Washington. Well, good model. He was in one. Of, he was in one of our <laughs> good looking model. Uh, might I, well, might thank I add? You, thank you. But well, he was in our very first calendar product. But mm -hmm. it really was about mm -hmm. taking individuals who were not professional models. Mm -hmm. We took mm -hmm. everyday guys. Mm -hmm. We had their names, their actual occupations, what they were doing, and then the calendar. Had, the calendar had every date you would see in any traditional calendar, mm -hmm. but there were over three hundred and fifty. Uh, significant dates that were particularly important to African Americans mm -hmm. in terms of our history. Mm -hmm. And so it evolved from that, which was just for you, the Black Gentleman Review, right. to a children's calendar called Tiny Pieces of the Dream, where we took mm -hmm. little kids, 
dressed him up in adult professional situations. Mm -hmm. So you would see a little judge in an oversized uh, robe, powerful, a pilot powerful. in, in uh, a pilot gear standing mm -hmm. next to a huge airplane. You mm -hmm. would see bankers, you would see all of that, dancers, ballerines. We just want to encourage the kids to be, to dream and be whatever they want to be. Mm -hmm. And we also did a calendar with the, uh, called Legends of the Apollo, mm -hmm. which was with the Apollo oh, right, Theater. We right. took images okay. of also, uh, many of the legendary entertainers that performed the James Brown, Patti Bell, and again, photos are mm -hmm. different, but the content was the same. So mm -hmm. you're learning as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also did a calendar with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in Kansas City, Missouri, wow. called Reflections of the Negro Baseball Leagues. So that was really the genesis of BDJ mm -hmm. Ventures. Mm -hmm. And we distributed that calendar. We did very well with that and really made a name for ourselves. And so we were able to... Uh, there were a couple of feature stories on mm -hmm. us, um, mm -hmm. news stations nice. here, in um, mm -hmm. the newspaper here. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on a number of programs uh, out in Chicago, and so mm -hmm. those types of things. Uh, and we tried to decide how can we leverage this into mm -hmm. something else. So we literally started um, operating gift shops in mm -hmm. African American museums across the country. And, and because if you think about it, a lot of times you go to these really great museums. Right. They have excellent exhibits and all of that. Absolutely. But then when you're leaving and you want to go into the gift shop, it's somewhat, let's say, underwhelming. Right. Sort of souvenirs. Yeah. And you, and you want to get that, really but it's, it's not right, at the type of quality that you mm -hmm. want. I mean, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that the, the venue looks good. Mm -hmm. They're offering quality merchandise. And we approached several museums saying, we can do this for you. Okay. So we came okay. up with a business model, and we did it. We were fortunate enough to uh, conduct that business with the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute in, mm -hmm. in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. Okay. We uh, did it for the uh, Reginald F. Lewis Museum, mm -hmm. which is oh, the I largest African-American yes. uh, yes. museum in the Mid-Atlantic area, mm -hmm. the Great Blacks and Wax Museum, mm -hmm. the Frederick Douglass Museum, mm -hmm. the Gantt Museum in Charlotte, North Carolina, the August Wilson Center in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, right. We handled the museum gift shop operations. And it was really interesting. It was uplifting to us because we were not only giving back, but we were also, you know, conducting a very viable business. Mm -hmm. And we were gainfully employing others, right. all of that. Providing so jobs. it was really something that really meant a lot to us, a lot to me personally, mm -hmm. because I really want to make sure that whatever we do, it's very clear that we take pride in what we do. We're going to offer mm -hmm. quality services and products and that we're going to do it very well. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for a time, and it really worked out well. Unfortunately, we ran into the economy. Yep. And, you know, if you think <laughs> about it, when the economy really started right. tanking, uh, probably around 2010 or so, mm -hmm. we were able to hang in until 2012 mm -hmm. or so, and we had to get out of the business because okay. people don't have uh, that discretionary income. Mm -hmm. They're not visiting as much. They're not spending mm -hmm. as much. So mm -hmm. that really caused us to change our model. And so we had to think, how can we leverage the experience that we have? Right. Right. into a new uh, thing, whatever that new thing is. Mm -hmm. And because with the museum gift shops, we handled all of their logo products. Anything that was branded, of course. we did it all. Of course. So mm -hmm. any of their wearables, and when I say that, I mean any of their po polo shirts, t-shirts, caps, anything that was wearable, we did it. Mm -hmm. Their figurines, we did mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. We did all of it. Their pins, their cups, mm -hmm. their mugs, we did it. Right. And so it was like, aha, if we can do it for them, we can do it for everybody. Excellent. It doesn't matter what Excellent. you're doing. Okay, it was niche oriented before, mm -hmm. but we can do everything. Mm -hmm. And so at different times in our evolution, every individual's had to carry the ball more so. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm carrying the ball right okay. now. And okay. so we're taking that concept of providing branded merchandise, customized logo products, and offering it to any organization that might be available. So we approach colleges and universities, mm -hmm. nonprofits, mm -hmm. traditional corporations, right. uh, unions. We're right. doing all of those things. And so we've been blessed enough to have uh, been able to get in a position where we are now uh, working with some of these institutions and we're just trying to grow the business. So mm -hmm. that's sort of a long-winded but, it's, but it's, hopefully it's a concise right. uh, story Definitely. about Definitely. the evolution of, of BDJ Ventures LLC. Mm -hmm. So right now we're focused on providing branded merchandise, okay. premiums and promotional products, advertising specialties to any organization that is looking to expand and promote their brand. That's what we do. And you have some items. Now, I, now, I do. Now I, I do. feel like uh, that's an appropriate and you segue. Have some items, so <laughs> why don't you show? All right, I'll the show audience, you a couple of um, things here. Um, this happens to be a journal. 
-hmm. And it's it's a, 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 a journal that has the logo imprinted on it or mm -hmm. debossed on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we do these types of things as well. Very Any high type, end. High end, high quality, and we have mm -hmm. a number of these. You mm -hmm. can, it, the price points can vary. Right. Right. Wi widely, mm -hmm. but this is a relatively high-end journal. Mm -hmm. This is just a really uh, inexpensive telephone or, or iPhone or smartphone mm -hmm. card holder. Mm -hmm. It adheres to the back of your phone. You can put mm -hmm. your ID cards in mm -hmm. it, your credit cards. If you don't want to carry your purse or your wallet, this right. does it. And right. it's really a very, very good promotional product. As a matter of fact, we did this for the African American Museum of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also provided these for PHL Diversity oh, right, for one right, of their functions. Right, well, yes. my company is the one that provided those. Um, this is a gift bag, Ooh, and looks some eco friendly, of you, right? It is yeah, eco friendly, okay. Okay. and this is for an organization that you may very well be aware of, mm -hmm. the Executive Leadership Council. Absolutely. And this is like yeah, the preeminent yeah, nice. organization of African American yes. executives of mm -hmm. all the organizations across the country. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing a project with them. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually the bag that they're going to be using. Okay, show us the bag. Uh, okay. th so this bag, bag. This is the okay. bag right here. And you have two other items. And this is a uh, satchel that we can customize. This is just a plain satchel, but mm -hmm. we have all types. Mm -hmm. and we can customize with your logo. And this is something that we do and provide uh, for a number of organizations. As a matter of fact, um, we provided the tote bags for mm -hmm. the... Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce Read to Me Early Literacy Program. So the tote oh, bags, the book bags that the okay. students have yes. in these uh, inner city Philadelphia, that's what we do. Okay. We provided them. Great. And it's really one of the things that I'm very, really very, very proud of because it's not so much a money maker, but it's also part of giving back. Mm -hmm. And so because literacy is absolutely critical. And here's a garment that is oh, actually, oh, sorry, oh, if you can see that, it's a very nice winter jacket. Mm -hmm. This is a female jacket, and the logo is actually embossed mm -hmm. on the jacket. And there's mm -hmm. so many different customization techniques, but whether it's screen printing or whatever, this happens mm -hmm. to be embossed. embossed. But uh, yeah. it really is uh, um, something that we really feel very proud of. And so we know that we can do this, and it's really a matter of making sure that we establish the appropriate relationships mm -hmm. so that those individuals can develop a level of confidence in what we can right. do and know that we're going to do it in a quality, total value kind of way. And when I say total value, I mean price, service, quality, reliability. That's what we try to offer. It's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious. It's very important to me, and yeah. I'm very passionate about it. Really. I, I see very that. Very serious I about it. I see that. We have just a few more minutes, and I love the story. I loved how mm -hmm. you brought together how you started. Mm -hmm. um, out of that, I'm taking partnerships, relationships. You definitely deliver results. Um, one of the taglines that I often focus on is focus your energy for action. When mm. you think about that and your business, how do you focus your energy for action? Well, for, for me and, and also for my partners, it really is about understanding that, yes, we want to make money. I mean, you're mm. in business to make money, sure. Mm. But we also want to positively impact the lives of others in whatever way that may be, mm -hmm. whether it's in your community, uh, individually or whether it's with working with others through your business and for me it really is about all of that so mm -hmm. certainly we want to make money but I try to work within the community I mentioned the reach me early literacy program right not only are we providing the bags but I'm literally going to the schools oh, and I'm reading it. to I the kids okay, so this great. is a, a beautiful thing to do uh, when I was living in Sheltonham just this had nothing to do with my business mm -hmm. I normally walk around in a warm-up suit and a cap mm -hmm. I took over leadership of the Sheltonham Sports Basketball Organization. Mm -hmm. They needed leadership, they needed some direction, and you never know what impact you're gonna have on these kids because they're looking up at you. So I was able to engage mm -hmm. others in the leadership effort. So I have doctors, attorneys, uh, um, judges, all these Involved. people are dressed up like this, but the kids see us talk playing basketball, right. but they understand that every single one of these individuals who was involved, they went to college. Mm -hmm. They read, they learned, they educated themselves so that they can do other things. On and the now they're time. still giving back. And the kids sort of realize that. One of the things that I used to say to the mm -hmm. kids, and the kids had to repeat to me, um, and I want them to remember it, and I would ask them about excellence. And there's a quote by Aristotle that says, um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, 
but a habit. habit. So we need to make excellence a habit in everything we do. So this is part of how I think we can give back, and that's what we do. Powerful. So that's very important to me. Aristotle. <laughs> what, what a powerful way to end. Bernard, thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much, you so much for being it. on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Folks, here you have it, Significant TV, Significant Stories. Bernard, thank you so much for being thank on the you. show. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing where you're going to be next. And um, I know who I'm going to call. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Do that.